Hey guys, Tony here. Welcome back. Let's talk CVS as it is dropping here in recent days, now trading at 68.64. Originally called out CVS down here at the low back in August of 2023 at 66.93 is where I got in. The absolute bottom was 63.49. So we got close, but not the exact bottom. It had a run up into January, running all the way up to $82 and change. As it started coming back down, I did exit my position on January 12th at $76.78. Now, CVS is falling, falling, falling. Let's do a quick update about what's going on with CVS and my thoughts on if it is something to consider to add back into the portfolio. When we last talked about CVS on August 18th, 2023, they had just reported earnings and a low on net income of 1.9 billion. The next earnings came in higher at 2.2 billion, sending the stock up towards the end of the year into January. And I had pointed out some problems with CVS, so I went ahead and took an exit on the stock as the price started coming down. And then they reported the next earnings down at 2.04 billion. Now here in April of 2023, CVS is plummeting again, currently trading at $68.64. And maybe the reasonable question to ask is, is it time to think about getting back into CVS? So I'm gonna spend just a minute with you guys going over a recent article and sharing some thoughts. Now, while analysts have some lofty price targets for CVS, I'm not so sure myself, but let's see what they are saying the average price target from industry analysts over the next 12 months is $89. The low is 76. And on the high side, one analyst has a price target of $106. I want to review with you this article from Barron's. The headline says Walgreens, CVS, and other pharmacy chains are in a world of hurt. What is to blame? And let's not forget in October of 2023, Rite Aid filed for chapter 11. On top line revenue, CVS looks good at first glance, a very long history of growing top line revenue. When we dig into CVS's net income though, we can see that they have been struggling to maintain that net income growth in line with the top line revenue growth. As we talked about in August of 2023 though, some of the real problem that I have with CVS where we need to be careful is the balance sheet. If we look at total assets, 249 billion versus total liabilities, 173 billion, that doesn't look so bad. However, when we go to the working capital, the current assets versus current liabilities, that is where we start noticing a problem. Total current assets at 67 billion versus current liabilities, 79 billion. When you have current liabilities greater than current assets, then you have a working capital problem. And we can see that here with a negative 11.3 billion working capital. This is the main concern I have with CVS. On top of that, the operating cash flow in the most recent quarter took a major hit, negative $2.6 billion. That is definitely something we're going to be watching in the upcoming earnings on May 1st. I will be live streaming that call here live on the channel, so be sure and tune in for that. In the article from Barron's, it says, turning these chains around won't be easy. Their biggest problem has been the declining reimbursement rates that pharmacy benefit managers pay them for the prescription drugs they sell, and those cost pressures are unlikely to disappear. At CVS, the company's retail pharmacy division had reported operating profits as high as $7.3 billion in 2016. However, more recently in 2023, they had adjusted operating income of only $6 billion. As profits have dropped, the chains have begun closing hundreds of stores. While most analysts have Walgreens rated a hold, CVS prospects are less dependent on its retail outlet since they did that merger a few years back with Aetna. CVS's results are more closely tied to the performance of Aetna. Three quarters of analysts actually have CVS rated a buy or overweight with a target price of $89.47. So now with CVS in the 68 to $69 range, we gotta ask ourselves, are these guys right? What should we do with CVS? Is it a buy? Is it a hold? Do we wait and watch till the next earnings? Let's keep going here. Now, back in 2021, CVS had said that through the end of 2024, they had planned to close up to 900 stores. 
However, Charles Rye, who covers Walgreens and CVS for TD Cowan, says that the chain pharmacy should consider closing far more stores than they have proposed while keeping open those that fit in with their efforts to expand into healthcare services. Charles says, I think they're slowly getting there, but maybe from an investor standpoint, you would want something a little faster. And as if they didn't have enough problems, we all see the videos daily, weekly about the shoplifting and theft problem that is going on nationwide in these pharmacies. Although neither CVS or Walgreens breaks out their shoplifting losses in financial reports, Walgreens has cited higher shrink levels as one reason behind a drop in its gross margins in recent quarters. For all the headlines those videos make, though shoplifting is not really the biggest problem that these pharmacies have. The product on the shelves only accounts for about a quarter of these pharmacies' revenue. The bulk of their revenue comes from the pharmacy counter, which brings us back to the beginning of this article. Pharmacies buy their prescription drugs from a distributor like Cardinal Health and then get reimbursed by pharmacy benefit managers, and there are three of them that control 80% of the market. Oddly enough, Caremark, which is one of the big three, is owned by CVS. But CVS tells us that there are strict firewalls between CVS and Caremark, and CVS has to negotiate with Caremark just like anybody else would. Maybe y'all want to figure that out, guys. Just saying, wink, wink. The question is, why do these pharmacies keep taking these lower and lower reimbursement rates? And the answer is, while the contracts are still profitable, the pharmacy benefit managers are going to push this right to the line every time. In their defense, a spokesperson for the Pharmaceutical Care Management Association says that blaming the PBMs misses the fundamental reason for high cost drugs, which is the prices set by the drug companies themselves. The job of the PBM is to keep the cost of prescription drugs as low as possible for employers and their employees, and we do that. To address some of these problems, analyst John Ransom with the firm Raymond James says that chain pharmacies could ease some of their financial pressures by shrinking. We think that drugstore counters need to significantly contract, he wrote in an October note to investors. But thanks to long leases, the number of chain drugstores locations has barely budged. Despite all the changes in consumer shopping habits and in the pharmacy business itself, the number of chain drugstores in 2022 was 20,900 down only slightly from 22,600 in 2010. What would make this work, he says, is if these pharmacies are able to get some sort of pricing power by reducing their number of locations. Scarcity. Now, talking just about CVS, they proposed in December their own solution, announcing a new proposed model for how its pharmacies will get paid by the PBMs. The new model will be simpler and more transparent, the company said, and will tie the pharmacy's level of reimbursement directly to the cost of the drug, plus a set markup and a per patient fee. Executives said in an investor presentation that the new model would reset the financial outlook for the retail business. However, the company still needs to convince the PBMs to play ball. In response to a question from Barron's, a CVS spokesperson said that the company plans to implement the new model starting in 2025 and that the feedback has been positive and that there are indications that the PBMs are thinking along the same lines, which could bode well for adoption. Now, I know that was a lot, but I want you guys to know what I'm going to be listening for in the upcoming earnings call and why at this time I am not going to be buying CVS, even though it's trading at $69 and 55 cents. I want to hear a little bit more about how they are progressing in their plans, both with the PBM negotiations and with the store closing reductions. CVS is trading at a forward PE ratio of only 8.37. However, I want to see a little more progress on these initiatives that they are working on. And, you know, if the price drops below 63 bucks or back in that range, I might consider taking a chance, starting to reaccumulate a position on CVS. That's just me. I would certainly prefer to pick it up even cheaper if I could. Let me know though down in the comments what you think about CVS. This really is a problematic one to figure out what is a good entry point considering everything that they have going on. I am Tony DeNaro and I will see you on the next video.